All right. All you, Draymond. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, good evening to everyone uh, who's out there listening. Um, welcome to Lee New Orleans uh, here. Uh, we basically, like I said, we create journalists uh, from start to finish. So that's what we try to do here. Uh, but if you're uh, watching this video or tuning in, um, you come here to find out more about this fellowship. And uh, so that's what we're here for tonight. So let's get started with the agenda. So we're gonna start off with introductions um, and also introduction to what Lee New Orleans is, who we are. Um, and then, uh, and that's gonna be introduced to you by our co-founder, Jen. And then uh, I'm gonna get into the fellowship overview. Uh, and if EJ wants to chime in on that, he can. And I'm um, also, you know, spread out the application details. And then towards the end, well, at the end, um, we're gonna get into questions and answers. Yeah, if anyone if if anyone has it. So yeah. <clears throat> so next, uh, let's see. So okay, my name is Trayvon Cole. Uh, I am the fellowship coordinator here at LEAD. Uh, just to give you a background about myself, uh, I actually started off as a writer. I started off as an author uh, back in 2017. And then <clears throat> from there, I got into journalism. Well, I, I kind of got into journalism in college, uh, actually like minor in it. Uh, and then, you know, I became an author and then Let's see, early part of 2020, I actually became an official journalist. Uh, I worked for the local newspaper, The Daily Comet, uh, home of Courier, back where I'm from, in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Started there, and then I moved to New Orleans uh, in September 2020, and that's how I got introduced to LEAD. Actually, I got introduced to LEAD uh, through uh, a retweet on Twitter. And uh, I was just looking for things to get involved with, with my move to New Orleans from Thibodeau. And I found lead. Uh, I went through the application process. Uh, I killed the application process. And um, yeah, and now we're here. I started off as a fellow. And then I worked my way up from a fellow to a senior fellow. And then from a senior fellow, uh, I became a coach. And from a coach, I became a, a fellowship coordinator. So it's been quite a journey. Uh, but nonetheless, it's been a great journey, a fun journey. Uh, a very informal journey. Uh, I learned so much within two years here at LEAD. Uh, I always like to say uh, I didn't go to school to get my master's, but I felt like LEAD was like my master's program because I learned so much in LEAD and uh, that I'm taking with me today. So uh, yeah, Jay, you have anything to say? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in and introduce myself. It's really cool to see Trayvon's growth of the program and just uh, thank you for those kind words. Um, uh, again, my name is Jen, Jen Lorino. I'm co-founder and executive director of LEAD New Orleans. Um, I knew I wanted to be a journalist all the way back in third grade when I was a little girl. Um, we did a newspaper project in my third grade class, and I was just awestruck at this power that you have to, through words or images, share information with people and share people's stories and connect people. Um, and that carried me all the way through college. I studied journalism at the University of Central Florida in Orlando. And my very first job was actually over here in New Orleans. And um, I spent more than a decade as a local reporter, um, a print journalist here in the New Orleans area. And over that time in my professional career, what I realized was the motivation that I got into journalism with to help people and to connect people for, to information wasn't always the reality in the spaces that I was in. Um, there were deep inequities in who got to tell stories and be a part of that process, and also how stories were being told and how communities, uh, what say they had in the news that they got. So here in New Orleans, that leads to very different news than perhaps the reality in our neighborhoods. And a lot of people are left out of that process. Um, so it was that disillusionment, I guess, that led to me um, linking up with my co-founder, Ejaz Mason, who's also on the call, to create Lead New Orleans. Um, the idea back then was that we could train people from underrepresented communities, specifically black and brown young people, to lead 
a movement toward equitable media and shift power in media to, um, to really empower communities and restore that, that core purpose of journalism to, to um, hold people accountable and to, to help people out, basically. And um, I'm happy to say that's brought us to today, where we're talking to you about this community reporting fellowship, um, and we've been able to do and expand and grow our programs. Um, and that's what really gets me excited um, about being here and sharing this with you. Uh, so again, my background's in print journalism, and uh, uh, my co-founder, Ijaz, is, is in film, so we bring this kind of holistic multimedia um, bent to a lot of what we do. Um, and the photo here on, on the slide is actually fellows from our fall 22, our spring 2021 cohort. It's a little throwback, um, uh, fellows and coaches. Um, Ijaz, did you want to jump in and introduce yourself, or do you want to let us move further? Okay, jump in really quick. <laughs> I'm going to be super brief. Uh, my name is E. Josh Mason. I am the co-founder and program director of Lead New Orleans. Uh, filmmaking is my trade. I've been in um, education around media for the past eight years, um, the last uh, two and a half of which I've spent with Lead New Orleans. Uh, I've been incredibly, I uh, really enjoyed my time and this incredible experience. Uh, just very happy for all of you out there who are thinking about joining the fellowship uh, and all of you who at one point may be in the fellowship, very excited to uh, get started and keep this work going with you all. Thank you, Ijaz. And Ijaz is on this slide. He's in that group photo. <laughs> yeah, I'm not important enough to get my own bubble. <laughs> he, he showed up unexpectedly on us. <laughs> so uh, before we got started and jumping into the actual community reporting fellowship and the nuts and bolts of that, I wanted to give you an overview of what Lead New Orleans is, why we exist, essentially. Um, our mission is to equip creative professionals from underrepresented communities, age 18 to 25, with skills, tools, and resources to transform local media. Again, going back to that idea of what if we shift power in media? What if we put equity at the center of what we do when we tell stories about our communities? How might that change? Who gets to tell stories? As well as what those stories look like and, and how stories are told. Um, at the very base of it, though, the core, we are a nonprofit community journalism organization. We are a nonprofit. Uh, we were founded back in 2019. Uh, that's when our ideas, um, Ijaz and I, we started flowing with the ideas, but the, the fellowship, which is our core program, actually launched in March of 2020, um, right before the pandemic hit, because we just have impeccable timing um, in all that we do, uh, but we persisted, and that has brought us here today, and our our what we make, in addition to um, crafting and molding and supporting super talented civic leaders and media makers, uh, is community-driven, equitable media. Um, and that's really what we're going to be talking a little bit about and Trayvon will share about um, the Community Reporting Fellowship's role in that. Um, our Community Reporting Fellowship is just one program that we do at League of New Orleans. We also have media training workshops that we go out into the community. Um, we do things like video, um, basic cinematography, photo, uh, interviewing, trying to democratize some of these media skills. And these are free workshops out into the community. If you're interested in those, hit up our website, leenola.org um, to see more about that. And we also make stuff. As I said, we make community-driven equitable media. This is a little snapshot from one of our uh, profiles we call the series Lead Voices, but it centers black and brown change makers in our city. Um, and this is actually Bree Anderson with Daughters Beyond Incarceration. She sat down with us and shared about her work, um, that is a video series that you can check out on our YouTube channel. Uh, and then of course we have our Community Reporting, Reporting Fellowship, which is really our central program. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Trayvon to, to talk about the details of uh, this upcoming fellowship, but super excited to share more about that uh, with y'all because this is really our boots on the ground program where we have people out there reporting on our communities. So with that, Trayvon, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, so uh, again, my name is Trayvon Cole. Uh, I am the fellowship coordinator here at LEAD. And a uh, couple of things, well, what my role is, is basically uh, from start to finish. Uh, so basically when the fellows come to when the fellows leave and everything in between, uh, I basically have my hands on from 
uh, setting up interviews, uh, making sure uh, the fellows have the right equipment, uh, even even saving at work and, and whatnot. Uh, so I, I do a whole bunch of things, even to order food for when we have meetings. So basically, I'm there, have my hands on in a lot of things. Uh, so just to give an overview of the fellowship, uh, this is a 16-week paid training experience for BioPoc and LGBTQ creative professionals. And uh, what we mean by creative professionals is that, um, uh oh, uh, <laughs> so what we mean by creative professionals is that. Uh, we're not just looking for just well, creative professionals are people who are just actively trying to get into the workspace. Uh, basically, if you're trying to kickstart your career and like I said, we're doing it from ages from 18 through 25. So people this age usually are trying to kickstart their career, trying to get something on their resume. So you don't necessarily need um, experience to become part of lead uh basically we give you the experience we teach you a lot of things from start to finish and uh and while doing that we pay you so we do have well we do give you two thousand dollar stipends uh and again it's 16 over 16 week period but if you factor in you know when we pay you so you basically get paid like eight times every two weeks uh for a 10 hour per week time commitment uh, so we also don't want to take all of your time, but uh, we do need some kind of time commitment uh, so we can make the best um, change and we can make the, the best effect on uh, our community driven work. Uh, we also also like to focus on journalism and documentary skills and project based learning and with that being said, we don't just uh, meet up and just go through slides and just tell you just, you know, just the history and everything of journalism, which is cool, but uh, we like to be more hands on. Um, we like to get out in the field. We want to make sure that uh, the fellows are out in the field, in the community, talking to people, meeting people, shaking people's hands, giving hugs, that type of thing, showing faces, uh, which it's the, the basically the makeup of lead. Uh, we don't wanna just sit behind computers, sit in a classroom and just write. We actually wanna get out, talk to people. We understand that conversations and faces is very important in the community, especially when you're writing about certain communities. Uh, so we like to be more hands-on and out and we like to do a lot of things, teamwork and a lot of things. And, uh, and we learn so much from each other. And um, so this session, the spring session is going to run from March to June, uh, tentatively. And a couple other things we like to do is uh, we like to publish our fellows' work. Uh, so we do we try to do a biweekly uh, newsletter with the fellows when they come along, so we can you know uh, about information about what we're doing or uh, one of the topics that we choose for the fellowship uh, for that run or for that spring or that fall. So, uh, and we just like to stick to the community driven part of it. Uh, we like to get out, talk to people, uh, making sure we fact checking, making sure we uh, saying the right things and making sure we having a positive image on um, what we're trying to get across and what we're trying to get across about this community. And another thing that's good about the fellowship is that uh, we are, well, we have small cohorts. Um, this past, with this current fellowship, we have six fellows. Uh, we've had more, we have less, but we try to keep it small. So we get, um, I feel like, I think we all feel that, you know, when it's small, you get more one-on-one, -on -one, you get more technical uh, teaching and you're able to, uh, you know, take the time out to actually learn and take your time instead of having to, you know, juggle trying to learn with, you know, 20 other people or something in a newsroom or, or like a classroom or something like at school or something. So it's, it's it's great that we have a small cohort and we have a lot of coaches and instructors that can give you that, you know, one-on-one -on -one time to actually teach you and give you the right tools you need to succeed. So what do you get here um, when you come to lead? Well, you get access to training. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, 
I don't know how long Jen is going to let me be a coach for, not a coordinator, but, you know, me being a coach, you get like one-on-one -on -one lessons with us. Uh, you get uh, coaching, again, from us and instructors. You, like, again, you get training, you know, training to put up cameras, training to do interviews and whatnot. Also, you get cold, hard cash. Uh, you get paid for this. You get paid to learn. Um, one of the reasons why I love Lee so much is that uh, not only – it gave me something to do when I moved to New Orleans, but it also gave me something to keep some money in my pockets trying to transition with moving. That can be very expensive and very stressful. So Lee kind of like took kind of some weight off my shoulders and it helped, helped big time. Also, you get equipment from uh, uh, cameras to, to audio equipment to uh, Adobe. You know, Adobe can be pricey. Uh, you get access to that. Uh, you also get access to um, to um, Uber stipends if you need if you need transportation if you need transportation uh, assistance we try to help with that as well and also uh, you get to become part of the league community and not only do you get part not only do you become part of the league community you also become a member more of your own community. Uh, you you be able to get out and uh, make these stories and and hear these people voices and you know you become one with that community as well and that's the most important part. Uh, of course, we love all our alumni and everybody here at Lee, but the most important part to me, at least, is uh, actually going out, getting the community, and being remembered that way as well. So and having a lasting effect, so people remember you for something good. And right here, uh, just an example of how are we in the newsroom, uh, you see it's people in groups, there's people writing things on board, there's people uh, bouncing ideas off of uh, each other. And I always say that every time I go into the newsroom, I come in with something and every time I leave, I leave out with something new. Uh, I come out with, with maybe something that I didn't know when I come out the newsroom, I probably learned something new, which is a good thing. And uh, it's a very good space for everyone, um, not only to, you know, bounce ideas and learn things, but it's also a safe space to decompress. Uh, we talk to each other. Uh, we don't just treat people just like, like it's work or whatever. We actually talk to people, uh, talk to the fellows, let them have a voice and, uh, just let them know that like, you know, they're heard and if they have anything that they want to talk to us about, they can. And another example here, so this is more of uh, in the field work. And uh, as you can see, Ejaz is setting up a, a microphone on Compton the Third. He's an art toy maker. So he's setting up a, a mic on him, but what you don't see is that these fellows set up all this equipment here. And uh, it was like, again, it's that one-on-one, -on -one, it's that hands-on uh, experience that you get. Uh, yeah, again, I know EJ is setting up a mic on the on the guy, but the fellows set up the cameras, they set up the lights. Um, EJ has probably directed them on, you know, what to look for, what not to look for. Uh, and all this was just one on one, hands on type training, uh, which is hard to get. Um, so, you know, multiple cameras, multiple lights, mics, um, the, the, the whole array of, of whatever you need to make a good, you know, story, documentary, or whatever you choose to do. And yeah, so this is our alumni board right here. Uh, it's not, it's not all of us, but- You got a few people missing. Yeah, you got yeah. a few people missing. But, uh, <laughs> a lot more than that. Yeah, so so the board is becoming real big. It's becoming, it's, it's, it's expanding. Uh, and again, I'm, I was very, I am very happy to be a part of it. And, uh, and I was very happy to be a fellow when I was, so, yeah. So we can get in, we can also get into the application. Uh, the application isn't the longest application, but uh, we do recommend for you to just take some time, um, make sure you go over the answers, make sure you read everything correctly, and just a few things uh, on the application. Uh, so, so for a few things on the application, uh, we talk about, we ask about background and identity. And uh, 
For that reason, we ask that specifically this, this fellowship is focused on supporting creative professionals from communities that are unrepresented in local media, including the Black, Brown, Indigenous, Latinx, Asian American, and LGBTQ communities. So we just try to, we, we understand that some communities uh, are unrepresented. So we just wanna know basically what's your background, where you come from and how we can help. Uh, as far as education and experience would lead, uh, again, you don't need previous experience in journalism or documentary or storytelling. You don't need experience in that. But uh, we do want to know what kind of experience do you have so we can know how we can work with you, what, what, we, what we can do to help, and uh, what we can do to en enhance uh, your skills if you indeed join Lee, uh, and you tell us that by that. Uh, again, for, as far as transportation is tech access, uh, we ask that simply because we want to we want to help. Uh, we don't want to hinder anyone from learning anything or learning new skills because, you know, things like transportation. Uh, again, we offer like uh, transportation stipends to help you uh, get, get to our meetings and from point A to point B. Uh, again, if you need computer space, we have computer space. Uh, again, we have programs that you can work on uh, and whatnot. So we 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 have a lot of things available. Just got to talk to us. Um, and there's also three short response questions on there. Um, basically, we just want you to take your time on them. Um, if you want to write them, you can. Also, if you want to. Um, Say so your answer in audio format, you also can as well. If you're not the most confident in writing, we understand that some people uh, say things better through, through voice than there's writing. Some people, that's how they just get their words out, which is totally fine. So we give you all options there. So you can write, you can do audio, uh, whatever makes you comfortable. Uh, we just wanna hear your responses. Uh, and again, just make sure you take your time, make sure you read over them. Um, you can also um, write, fill out your application and send it to us through our email, which we're going to get to, so we can try to edit it, whatever you need, but that's also is a deadline to that too. So uh, yeah, so basically just take your time. And the last part is just a one minute selfie video, just introducing yourself. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You could just record it on your phone, just one minute selfie video saying, hey, this is me. This is what I like to do. I'm excited to uh, join lead or maybe tell us why are you doing this? Um, yeah, so basically that's the application. Uh, shouldn't be too long, not too hard. Uh, you shouldn't stress yourself over it about it. But again, what I can say is that uh, the best thing you can do is just take your time, uh, read out your answers, think them over and just send it off. Oh yeah, and applications are due Sunday, January 8, 2023 at 11.59 p.m. Uh, no later than that. Uh, if you send it at 12 o'clock a.m., it just won't work. Yes, the application closes at midnight. So yes. cutting it close to that 11.50 line, just hit submit at 11.59. <laughs> Don't do that to yourself. Um, thank you, Trayvon, for walking through all of that. Um, I wanted to go over a few resources that we have for folks as they are getting into applying. Just to reiterate what Trayvon said, the more time you can give yourself on this application, the better. The best applications are thoughtful. They have time put into them, and that's just apparent. Uh, so to help you around this, uh, we have a couple of things. We have an editing hotline, as Trayvon man mentioned, when you could, where you can get feedback and editing on your short response questions. Um, this we've primarily done for writing, but if you have audio questions that you want to send and send feedback or get feedback on, we could totally do that too. We could give those a listen. Um, that For that, you would just email leadneworleans at gmail.com um, and we'll try to get back to you within two to three days. Um, business days. The deadline to submit for that and get feedback is Thursday, January 5th, 2023. If you submit after that, we just don't have enough time to give you adequate and solid feedback. So please respect that deadline. 
If you have questions beyond this Q&A and you want to talk one on one with a staff member, um, I'm going to drop a link um, in the chat and also it'll be in the body if you're watching this on YouTube of our YouTube um, video on this. Uh, click there to schedule a one on one with one of us, or you can email Trayvon directly. His email is Trayvon at leadnola.org, which will also be dropped in the chat. Um, and in addition, if you check out uh, leadnola.org at, um, and did I say Trayvon at leadnola.com? Trayvon at leadnola.org, if that's not clear. <laughs> um, and for additional information, including a preview of the application um, and a link to that, and uh, this and this recording, uh, hit up our website at uh, www.leadnola.org slash fellowships, and we'll have all that posted up there. Just for a look at what happens after you submit your applications, applications did go live in November, so they've been up for a little while now, but as uh, Trayvon said, um, they are due January 8th, 2023. Now 2022, copy editing mistake at 11.59 p.m. Um, we will be reviewing applications and then January 30th to February 10th, we'll be interviewing candidates. Um, on February 17th of next year, all applicants who applied in this round will be notified of our final decisions. And then the spring 2023 fellowship will begin in March of 2023. So with that, I'm going to actually shift to Q&A, and I'm going to read some questions from the chat that have been appearing in there. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, but I'm going to read some questions from the chat. <laughs> um, and Ijaz and Trayvon, if you could jump in and answer. Uh, first of all is, uh, when again does the fellowship start? So the fellowship starts uh, in March of 2023. Uh, that's when the fellowship starts. Uh, we haven't picked a specific date yet, but roughly around March 2023. So that's around the time you can start preparing. Um, if you indeed get chosen, that's when you can start preparing to know that, you know, in March is when we're going to start. And um, yeah, I. Even though I'm, even though we're in a fellowship, I'm still excited about March. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's usually around mid March um, that it usually happens. So, what we do have is a fellowship showcase for our previous fellowship, um, and that'll actually be a great entry point for any incoming fellows to kind of see what the last fellowship did and learn from that. But pretty much right after that, we'll be launching into the next fellowship. Yeah. So yeah. mid March, we don't have an exact date, but typically that's when it's around. So come to come to the end of the year event, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I feel if yeah. you come to that, then tap in with us around that. Yeah, for sure. Um, more chat questions. Um, we touched on: Do I have to have prior journalism experience? But I'm I'm gonna kind of massage that question a bit. Um, what if I'm not confident in writing or video or one of the mediums? Is this a right fit for me? I would say absolutely. Um, you know, we're not looking for, well, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. Um, you know, we take, we take in everyone. Um, if you have an interest in journalism, if you feel like journalism um, could potentially be a career for you um, or just a true passion of yours, if you're passionate about storytelling, then, you know, bring it on. Um, I think that what's more um, important for me rather than having experience or being an expert in one field or another, um, it's just having that general drive and, you know, like I said, the passion to want to learn and want to get better in this and the understanding that community journalism and community storytelling is important. Um, that said, um, like any job, like any um, any cohort or fellowship or anything that you might want to get into, you know, freshening up on, you know, some skills or trying to have at least a baseline understanding of something um, is important. Uh, I'm not saying you have to, you know, have a ton of experience doing video editing, but you may want to like, you know, take a shot at using some, some free softwares or 
seeing if you can craft a story using some iPhone footage or what have you, just so that when you come in, there's at least that baseline understanding um, and we can, we can roll from there. But no, you don't need to be an expert in any particular discipline um, to succeed and to do well and to learn um, with the New Orleans. We've actually had people that had no video editing experience come in and make a and make a short doc, right? Each house. Yeah, I would say the vast majority of the fellows that we've had um, don't have any prior video editing experience, but they do now. Yeah, and I was one of them. Uh, I came in as a writer, not a, a video editor or anything. So uh, I learned all of that basically at lead, to be honest. Mm. What would you say to people that don't feel confident in writing? Trayvon since you've gone through the program is this an opportunity to learn around? uh it's definitely an opportunity to learn for sure and of course uh Jen is the writing whiz you can say and I guess you can say <laughs> each as is a video whiz so both uh, you you have whizzes for whatever skills you need so uh yeah because I mean to be honest um Trust me, if you write something, Jen is going to help you try to figure it out, try to get your thoughts out. She's going to help you definitely um, put it I'm in not the, the best only ways coach, you can. By the way, of course, have, of course we have she, other uh, ones. <laughs> uh, she's definitely not the only coach, and uh, and <laughs> and also you have a like you said, we have a bunch of other coaches and instructors that can help you. Uh, we just need you just to try. Basically, mm -hmm. we need you to just put your best foot forward. Whatever you have, just put it out on the table. And from there, uh, we, we can help you grow. Uh, so don't think that any idea or anything that you've written is stupid or anything that uh, you, you've taken is stupid, as in for us like video or photography. Uh, no. So anything here is it's good work. As long as you try and try to put your best foot forward. Yeah. I, and to reiterate that, I think that we really strive to craft and continually build a culture of learning and growth through the fellowship. And that's really just apparent in when we go out in the field or when we're in the newsroom, um, you really get this sense of like, I actually can try these things without feeling like, you know, I don't have space to fail basically. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's hopefully what, what we are creating. Um, one last question from the chat. Uh, what what does a successful fellow look like, or like what what is what makes a successful fellow, in your opinion? And I'm guessing like not physical looks. No, nah, I, I, I feel like a successful <laughs> like, fellow. Like what what is a what is a successful fellow? What attributes do they have? Character. Well, well, for one, one the. First thing is a uh, successful fellow is one who makes it through 16 weeks. That's that's just that's that's the first thing I'm gonna say. Um, and also, I think I, if I think a successful fellow is one who comes in uh, just better than what they were when he came in. Uh, I feel like if you, if you came in and maybe your let's just say your video editing skills were or your video taking skills were on six. And you left there and now just say on a scale of one to 10, there is like an eight and a half, nine. Uh, that's success. Um, I just feel like if you come in and also if you come in and say, this is what you're going to do and you end up doing it. Uh, now, the plan may be different because things change, of course. But if you come in and say, hey, I want to do this and you end up doing it and then you exceed those expectations. I feel like that's a success. I feel like that's a successful fellow to me. Huh. So I hear you saying like a willingness to learn, being able to adapt. Yep. Like, yeah, flexible. just progression and just, you know, being open minded, mm -hmm. um, just knowing that you have a lot to learn. We all have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts, you, Jaws? What yeah, I think that, know? yeah, I think that a successful fellow is someone who leads like with curiosity, who comes in with a lot of, you know, curiosity on not just the different content that we create, but also like, you know, what storytelling can do to improve different things about our community here in New Orleans. And what success looks like is by the time you leave the fellowship, 
having way more curiosity than what you came in with. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you may have thought you do something or you may have um, thought you had it all figured out or you may have had an idea or an assumption, but by the time you leave, you've been exposed to many different voices, many different uh, ways of looking at things, um, problems, solutions, people who are involved in whatever you were thinking about. And so by the time you leave, you should have your entire, your, your world should be totally reopened. Um, mm -hmm. So that way you can take the skills you've learned and keep on doing the work and keep on reporting. Um, you know, I feel like college, uh, college is supposed to be this place where they tell you, you know, by the time you leave, you'll have found yourself. You have understood, you know, who you are as a person and what you want to do. And it rarely ever happens like that, right? And lead is, to me, the exact same way. Like, when you come in, you think you know something, you think you have, you know, it all figured out or whatever, um, or you have questions. And by the time you leave, you should have many, many, many more. So, you know, yeah. that's, what a, that's what a fellow, that's what a fellow, look, that's what a successful fellowship looks like to me. Yeah, that's such a good point. I'm always struck by the number of fellows, especially who grew up here. Like, I've never been to that part of town, or I've never even like knew this place existed. Or I'm so glad I connected with this person. You know, I actually found out that our families are from the same place. <laughs> um, the power of storytelling to connect is something that I think resonates throughout our fellows and that desire to connect with others. Very good. Well, that's that for questions, Trayvon. Any closing thoughts, parting words? <laughs> um, all I, all I have really have to say is that uh, I just want to emphasize is please take your time on application and just, you know, really think it out. I know from my application, I really thought it out. Um, it would lead with something that I really wanted to be a part of, even though I didn't fully, fully understand it at the time. But uh it was something I really wanted to be a part of. And I just took my time and I really just, uh, I, I, I stayed myself for sure. But uh, I just really just put my best foot forward and I just went for it. So I feel like uh, if, if, if you want to sign up and, it's, and if, if this is something you want to do, I think uh, just, just take your time and try your best at it. Awesome. Thank you all for tuning in to this Q&A. Like I said, if you're watching a recording of this, check out the description um, or link below to see how you can contact us if you want to schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, tap into the editing hotline, other resources. Um, other than that, we hope to see an application from you soon. Yes. Thank you. <laughs>